This video is made with generous donations from amazing furries, just like you. Hey everyone, and welcome to a remake of my bodysuit tutorial. To start off, let's go through what we will need for this project. For materials, you will need fur fabrics of your choice. I usually aim for three or four meters for bodysuits. However, you may need more or less depending on your body shape and complexity of your character. A strong thread, you could use bonded nylon or upholstery thread. Standard thread is fine, just be sure to go over your seams more than once. Minky or other material for hemming. A long chunky zip that measures from your collarbone to just under your belly button. It can be longer if you like. Some lycra, some basic cotton fabric, some quilted broadcloth, some small dress zips, polyester stuffing, three other chunky zips, and the length of those will be determined by the bodysuit measurements. For tools, you will need one duct tape dummy. Follow my tutorial on my channel to see how to make one of these. It will need to be stuffed with a coat hanger inside sticking out of the neck. A completed digigrade foot or other foot or other foot placeholder. A sewing machine. This tutorial can be done by hand, but it is not recommended due to its sheer size and the durability required. Sewing pins, sewing clips, a hand sewing needle, and something to hang your bodysuit on. This is optional, but recommended. Um, I'm using this clothes rack from Ikea. Some thick foam carved into the shape of your rough padding or other material you can use to create the padding. And a slicker brush. All right, so to start, we want to have our duct tape dummy stuffed and hung up ready for use. Then we are going to begin to position our thigh piece. I have carved these out of thick foam, laid on top of one another and carved down with my electric knife. However, you can literally use whatever you like to form your shapes. Add and subtract foam with tape until you're happy with the first shape. You could even use newspaper, scrap foam, whatever works. In general, the thigh piece should go up past the groin a little and end just after the knee. The width is up to you um, and your own personal preference. Play around with the shape until you're happy. If you need to, add your calf shape too. However, I'm using a placeholder I made in my Digi Feet tutorial to help me here. If you're doing unattached feet, I recommend making them first and using this stage to make sure your fur covers your feet tops properly. Just follow the same principles with your tape. The shape of the thigh piece from the front should resemble a rough teardrop shape. And I'm using duct tape to hold these pieces in place. Now I attach the butt piece. This is usually just a flat hemisphere like a butt cheek. It's what we're using it for after all. This piece can curve around the side to the thigh if you want some hip width to your padding, but I'm opting not to for this specific build. Once I'm happy with my shape, I cover my DTD in cling wrap to prepare it for the patterning stage. Note I'm only doing this padding and wrapping with one side, and this is because this character has symmetrical markings, so we will be mirroring the pattern to create the whole bodysuit. If your bodysuit design is asymmetrical, you will need to add padding and tape to the other side as well. I have fitted the paw onto the DTD to make sure there's enough space for the hand paw to sit under the sleeve, so I cling wrap over the wrist a bit too. Now we start duct taping one side of our DTD, making sure to keep it smack bang in the middle. Um, and you don't need to do more than one layer here. Be sure to bring it up over the neck and all the way down to the wrist. When you reach where you want your zip on feet to go, bring it down evenly over that edge about an inch or two. I noticed my front thigh piece not being shaped quite right, so I used some tape to correct it. Now we start dividing up our body. First draw on any markings on your bodysuit. I thought this was a one color bodysuit, so I completely skipped this step. Then start dividing your body into sections. I separate the upper torso and legs, running the line down into the crotch and above the butt padding. I separate the arms from the rest of the body and then divide the arms into front and back and 
the remaining torso into front and back slash belly and back too. The legs I divide down the middle and separate the ankle where it will connect to the digi feet. The key is to separate everywhere where the pattern bends inwards. Mark each piece with its location like inner leg, ankle, belly, etc. and draw an arrow with the fur direction. In general it will go towards the ground. I trim excess cling wrap and then start separating the pattern up bit by bit. Try not to cut into the duct tape dummy whilst doing this. Once the pieces are off, I cut into any curved bits so they lay flat when placed on a flat surface. Try to make as few cuts as possible, it can be tricky but you will get there with practice. Now we have our pattern, we are going to trace it onto the fur. I'm using washable markers and chalk pens to trace these bodysuit pieces. Remember to trace the pieces one on each side of the pattern, once with tape side up and once with tape side down, taking note of the direction the pile is running. Write down what piece it is and which side of the pattern you're tracing. I like to label mine as A for tape up and B for tape down. Once you have all your pieces traced, cut them out using sharp scissors, being careful not to trim any of the fur pile. Or you could use a sharp craft knife. The amount of seam allowance you give is up to you. I tend to give about a centimetre. Now we begin the long task of sewing it all together. I am using an overlocker stitch on my machine. This almost simulates an overlocker and does a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch in the same pass effectively. If your machine doesn't have this, I recommend a straight stitch and then a zigzag stitch over the top. I sew closed any darts on my chest pieces where my zip will be going and we wanna get the zip out of the way as soon as we can as it is a pain to do once the body is together. I start installing my zip by taking a small amount of cotton and folding it around the base of my zip to stop it separating when unzipped, just securing it in place with a straight stitch around the edges. I will be doing my zips slightly differently than usual um, using Matrices Deluxe Zip Tutorial which you can find on their Patreon, however I will demonstrate the basic technique for you guys. Take your zip and pin the edge of the zip pull side down to the fur. So the pull side of the zip and the fur side of your fa fabric are touching. Pin or clip in place and sew with a straight stitch as close as you can to the zipper teeth. A zipper foot on your machine will be really useful for this and repeat on the other side with the chest piece. Now we start assembling everything else, piece by piece, little by little.
Once you have your torso minus your arms assembled, we can add a little something extra. These are optional, but will really give your bodies that awesome finish. I draw out two circles, roughly the size of the area under the armpit. These will form gussets. Gussets allow the wearer to raise their arms with ease. These are my new favorite thing to add to bodies. You don't need specific measurements with these, just make sure they're no more than the circumference of your armholes. Pin exactly half of your circles to the armpit area of your torso piece and sew in place. Now I start assembling the arm pieces by sewing all of my darts closed and then attaching them to my torso pieces with the gussets. It should still match up perfectly if you've sewed half of your gusset edge to your torso. And remember, we're keeping all of the A pieces on one side and all of the B pieces on the other side of the body. Now I finish assembling the rest of the arm pieces. I cut and add an extra strip about two inches thick on the end of the arms to add a bit of length. I'm not sure why, but they always don't end up being long enough no matter how far I tape it. So I add this every time and it fixes it straight away. Be sure to trim your threads back as you go. I then cut a long strip of minky around an inch and a half thick and pin fluffy sides together along the neck of the suit to begin the hem, folding in a small amount on each end to hide the raw edge. I sew along this with a straight stitch with a small seam allowance. I trim any excess back and then fold the strip in half with fluffy sides out and then fold that over again over my seam, pinning it down inside the neck. I also add a tag to the bodysuit with my logo and care instructions, but obviously this is optional. I go along the edge with a straight stitch to complete the hem. Be sure to brush out any trapped fur on the other side. Now we start assembling the legs. I sew the darts on each piece together before assembling them all. If you have already made your zip on feet, take note of whether your zip splits at the front or the back of your foot and leave this side of your leg open, but sew together all other seams. So you have either the seam down the front unsewn or one, the one down the back. If you haven't made your feet yet, then just leave your front seam open. And if you're not doing the zip on technique, then sew it together however you like. With the flat part of the leg, Pin the pull tab side of your jacket zip to your ankle. Pull the side down, leaving an inch or two of fur after the teeth of the zip to cover it. Be sure to match up the middle of the zip with the middle seam to let your feet attach straight. Straight stitch your zip into place. You don't need to sew close to the teeth. A bit of room between your zip and stitches will make it easier to attach your feet. Then sew that big seam we left open closed and repeat on the other leg. I brush the seams out a bit and test the attachment to my pre-made digifoot. Looking good.
Now sew the second leg together in the same way you did the first. If you find your machine is struggling to take your fur, try investing in a walking foot to help pull your fabric through. Or you can add some wax paper on top of your pieces to make, the machine, make it easier for the machine to pull through. Then I pin and sew the legs together along the groin. I test the upper torso fit on the DTD and see where I want my tail hole to go. If you have standard belt loops, you can just leave a small amount of your seam open between your legs and torso to thread your loops through. However, if you have a zip on tail like this suit does, we need to create a base for our tail to zip onto. I cut two circles of quilted broadcloth the same size as my tail base to use as my zip-on base. I then take my zip and pin it pull side down with the fabric on the inside of the teeth which in retrospect isn't the best way to do it. You can pin it pull side up with the fabric on the outside as well if you make your circle a little larger than your tail base too. It can be a bit tricky to pin but work slowly pinning perpendicular to the seam and then straight stitch. Then pin your circle zip, zip side down onto the inside of the body. Straight stitch along the edges of your circle piece, taking care not to sew over the zipper teeth. Now I use my scissors to carefully trim the fur around where the zip was. I leave about three quarters of an inch of fur around the hole to hide the zip. Let's give it a test. Looks good. Now we attach the legs to the torso. Ignore the fact the suit suddenly has a different color belly. Sky may have forgotten that part. Keep shifting the fur around on the side of your machine to help it go through with ease. And that's all of the fur parts of the bodysuit done. Now it's time to pattern the digi padding pillows. I take my DTD with the padding still taped on and use my pattern to mark where the padding meets the DTD to create a boundary where the padding will meet the person's leg. I use Sharpie to, meet, to mark where the padding or raised parts on, start on the base of the DTD. I start taping within this area. You can cover this area and cling up to make it easier but I'm lazy so I'm just going straight over the top. I'm doing this with the butt and thigh pieces. If you have your calf pieces, repeat with them too.
Now I take those patterns off, along with the foam pieces I use for padding and cut them till they lay flat. Using the boundaries we drew on earlier, I will fill those areas on the DTD with tape to create a pattern for the base of our pillows. Now we take our base pattern pieces and trace and cut two of them from lycra or similar. I chose lycra for this to keep, help keep the wearer cool. Now I'm taking some basic cotton, this can be whatever colour or pattern you like, and cut two of our pattern pieces taken from the tops of our foam pieces, one on each side again. Now it's time to sew these together. Using a straight stitch from here on out, I start by sewing closed any darts in our padding and taking one of my small dress zips and sewing them pull side down onto the back of our lycra pieces, sewing in a box around the base, top and sides. Don't worry about there not being a hole for it to unzip just yet. I now sew together each of my cotton padding pieces darts ready for assembly with our bases. Carefully cut along the middle of the zip from the opposite side to create a hole for our pieces to be stuffed with and turned inside out with. And unzip. Then pin and sew the cotton pieces to the lycra pieces and a normal straight stitch will work fine to sew these together. Because of how we patterned it in this case, an A piece will pair with a B piece instead of the same letters together like previously. Turn these pieces right side out using the zip and now we are ready to install. Using a needle and thread, start by attaching the tops and bottoms of your thigh pieces to the body turned inside out. The center of your cotton piece will run along the front seam of your leg. If you're having trouble lining it up, refer to your DTD and the boundaries we drew on it. For more of an idea, but it should fit. Try to keep it so that the padding fabric is flush with the fur and this will reduce bunching. Don't be afraid to unpick it and redo it if it's not quite sitting right for you. Add a small area of stitches on either side of the thigh pieces as well. Use the fabric shape as reference for where it needs to be pinned. Do the same with the butt pieces and making sure they're positioned correctly. If you find this step a bit too challenging, you can skip it entirely as your padding will hold in fine with friction and a correctly patterned bodysuit, but I feel this finishes it a bit nicer. Fill with stuffing to your desired firmness using the zips and close. Then finally test the fit on either you or your DTD. Now you're done. I hope this tutorial was a bit more helpful than my last one. And if you guys have any questions about these tutorial steps, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them in a Final Cut episode for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.